My favourite book of 2020, CE, was a tie between two Japanese novels, Breasts and Eggs by Miyako Kawakami and Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. But Earthlings is a difficult book to recommend. It is full of things that I just can't talk about on YouTube, and yet it is a very punk and angry book about the social and political zeitgeist of modern day life. It's exactly the kind of book that's difficult to recommend while praising endlessly and calling a favourite. It's a weird juxtaposition. This year I'm in pretty much the same position with this, Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumford. I think Tell Me I'm Worthless is my favourite book of 2021. I know we're not quite at the end of the year at the time of recording, but I can't see anything topping this. I think this is my favourite book of this year. Let's talk about why. Last night I went to an event in London, and there I was lucky enough to meet the owners of Cypher Press, who published this book, and I joked with them that I wasn't sure how I was going to make a video about this book. It's so difficult to talk about. Tell Me I'm Worthless is a pretty radical piece of fiction. It's by a British trans woman, it's published by a small indie press, and I think it is shaking up the world of literature, and it is holding a mirror up to the fascistic state of modern day Britain. Tell Me I'm Worthless begins with a prologue about a boy. It's almost like a short story about how young men become fascists. It describes a boy who is bullied by his father. His father is a hyper-masculine guy who is telling his kid the right way to be a man. The boy then goes online. He locks himself away in his bedroom, and he discovers all of those forums that young incels go on that tell him what the real problems of the world are, and how he needs to open his eyes to how it's really women and queer people and foreigners and migrants who are the problem, and so he becomes an incel. Then the book really begins, and the book tells the story of two women, Alice and Illa. Alice is a young 20-something trans woman living in Brighton. We get Alice's chapter first, and Alice pretty much tells us about how she is haunted by the ghost of a singer of a band who were very popular in the 80s. It never names this singer, but it makes it very, very obvious who it is, and I'm not going to name him either. But it talks about how now he's pretty much hated for the fact that he's very racist and xenophobic. But there is a poster of him and his band up on Alice's wall from when she was a kid, and the singer crawls out of the poster and haunts her like a ghost. Alice goes to a party, and there she meets a young woman that she ends up bringing home, and the two of them sleep together, before the ghost of this singer then tries to attack that girl, and she runs out screaming. It's a weird beginning, it's a really weird setup, but the point of it is that this singer represents racism, represents fascism, represents the most toxic and twisted and gnarled issues of the UK today, and it's those issues that are haunting Alice as a young, liberal, left-wing trans woman. Alice is being haunted by the ghost of Britain, but it all began when she and her friend Illa went to an actual haunted house. We then cut to Illa's story in chapter 2, and Illa is a turf, a transphobe, gender critical, whatever term you want to use. She is walking through a giant protest march of trans people fighting for their rights and screaming trans rights are human rights, trans women are women, trans men are men, etc. And it turns out she's going into a meeting because she has written a bunch of articles and become semi-famous in the UK for being an outspoken, gender-critical woman. And she's going to a meeting full of more of these women. But Illa used to be best friends with Alice, and we find out here in this meeting how the two of them were no longer friends, and it also explains why she is now transphobic, gender-critical, whatever term you want to use. Illa claims that Alice sexually assaulted her. Alice claims the exact same thing about Illa, and says that it happened in this haunted house. So the house is to blame for the fact that the two of them no longer talk, the house is to blame for the fact that Illa is now transphobic, and the fact that Alice is now haunted by the ghost of a racist pop singer. From the blurb you get told about the house. You get told how Alice and Illa, when they were friends at university, they went to this house. They were making some kind of personal protest about how there are abandoned houses and yet so many homeless people. This is a thing a lot of us in socialist circles talk about. And so they go there. They also bring a third friend, Hannah, who gets her own chapter much later in the book, 
when we finally see the haunting. Up until then, though, for the first half, first two thirds of the book, we only see the chapters of Alice and Illa, and their relationships to one another, their relationships to their past, and how they are now haunted as adult women. The haunting itself, we don't see until later in the book, but it's pretty harrowing. Tell Me I'm Worthless is a horror novel. It's a really terrifying book. There are real moments of terror in here, but it is 50-50 divided up between your more traditional haunted house horror in a very Shirley Jackson, Haunting of Hill House kind of way, and the horrors of modern day life, the real political and social horrors that trans people, queer people, black people, minorities, migrants, etc., all face every single day in this country full of bigots and fascists. It's obviously very clear by this point that both I and Alison Rumford are very, very, very angry people. I hate this country as it is today, and so does Alison Rumford. And she is taking that anger and turning it into a beautiful piece of art. A haunted house novel, very much in the vein of Shirley Jackson, but also a novel about transgenderism, about trans rights, about fascism and bigotry and conservatism and the state of Britain. That's what this book is about. I don't want to spoil anything else that happens in the book. I don't want to talk about Hannah, the third friend. I don't want to talk too much about the house. But as the book goes on, you do learn more about the house and its origins, the person who built it, the people who've occupied it before, how it became abandoned, why it stands the way it does today. And it's really eerie. There are some horrible stories here. Again, like Sayaka Murata's Earthlings, there are some really horrible moments. There are a lot of things that are gonna trigger us. And it's pure horror in a very more traditional horror story way. But again, it serves a greater political social purpose, especially when you find out what the house was called. And I'm going to give this away because it does happen relatively early on in the book, and I think it allows me to talk more freely about the themes of this book and why I think it's so wonderful. The founder of this house, which is mostly just called The House, with a capital H all the way through the book, he named the house Albion. Albion, if you don't know, is the oldest known name for Britain. Sometimes it's used to describe this giant or group of giants that created the island of Britain. Other times it is used as a kind of poetic nickname. But Albion is Britain. <laughs> I think that pretty much explains what I wanted to say. The house, Albion, is Britain. And that's the entire thematic point of this book. These two women entered a haunted house. The haunted house is named Britain. And the house turned them both into aggressive, dangerous and predatory people at each other's throats. It twisted the mind of one, turning her into a bigoted transphobe, and it twisted the life of the other, making her feel vulnerable and afraid all of the time. This is exactly the state of Britain today. We have trans people, non-binary people, any non-cis people fearing for their lives, begging for healthcare, begging for support, financially, politically, socially, and Ela represents the more sympathetic side of gender-critical ideologies. A person who believes that she was sexually assaulted by a trans woman who used to be a friend of hers. And so I did initially feel like this book was a little bit centrist, a little bit both sidesy, but it's not really. It's simply being sympathetic towards gender-critical women, many of whom are basically confused not to patronize them and not to give too many of them the benefit of the doubt. But the gender-critical ideology in this country comes from the patriarchy. That's kind of the overarching message of this book, is that you've got queer people who are vulnerable, gender-critical people who are angry, and the patriarchy, hanging over all of it like a big haunted house named Britain that is controlling and whispering into the ears of people. It's a puppet master. It is a white male patriarchal system that controls everything, tells us what to think, tells us what to feel through its media, through its laws, through its actions, and we are at each other's throats. That's the book. And it's a masterpiece. Through Tell Me I'm Worthless, Alison Rumfit creates a haunted house story that is really about the state of Britain today in terms of patriarchy, bigotry, transphobia, etc, etc. Alison Rumfit is angry. 
at conservatism, she's angry at fascism, we all are, and she uses that rage to create an incredible haunted house novel, a punk and angry piece of art, and my favourite book of 2021. Just before I finish, I do want to talk about how beautifully written this book is as well. The structure and construction of this book is fantastic. There is one chapter that features two parallel stories happening like newspaper columns, and it's not a gimmick. It works brilliantly well to service the plot and the events of that chapter. The prologue that I mentioned that introduces the concept of incel culture. The house itself as it becomes its own character and it starts talking and whispering and feeling and spreading its hate and its bile. It is such a well-written character, the House Albion. It is terrifying. Alison Rumfit has managed to not only write something that is a very, very deliberate and clear and loud political allegory, she's also just written a really fantastic horror novel, a really brilliant haunted house story. It is chilling, it is upsetting, it is frightening, but it is all of that on two levels politically and socially, and in a more traditional way. It is a haunted house novel, so you are getting two things at once. I love horror stories, horror movies, and horror books, and that's what I got here. I got a fantastic horror story, a very Shirley Jackson horror story. But I also got something that is a very intense political allegory that feels very much written for me and people like me. Left-wing people, socialists, non-cisgender people, queer people, people who are afraid every day and fighting and protesting and considering escaping Britain once and for all because it's such a dangerous place now. And Alison Rumfit ties all of that up in one 260-page novel. This is my favourite book of 2021. Tell Me I'm Worthless should go down in history as one of the great British novels. I swear to God, this is one of the great British novels. Please read it. This is absolutely a masterpiece, beginning to end. Tell Me I'm Worthless is perfect. Please read it, and please subscribe for books.